but we're like these weird aliens. Whatever you eat becomes you. Just process that. You know that old statement, right? You are what you eat. Nutrition is really, really important. The other thing I want to share with you is always remember the 80-20 rule. In America, they always talk about exercise, 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 especially about weight loss. And the reality is you cannot exercise enough from a bad diet. Mm-hmm. Diet and nutrition and health and weight loss is all 80% diet, 20% exercise. If nutrition is the key. It doesn't matter. You can run marathon after marathon after marathon, but if you're eating a bad diet, it just cannot overcome a bad diet. So what he's going to share tonight is super, super important. A couple quick announcements. We have a community dinner coming up on the 24th. Community dinner is an opportunity for any of your friends or family who you really want to introduce to this culture, who really want needs chiropractic, needs a healthy lifestyle. It's an opportunity to bring them to dinner uh, on the 24th on Monday. You do have to sign up. Uh, we have dinner at... Uh, Left Bank Santana Road. Yep, Left Bank Santana Road. Now you guys see who really wins this office. <laughs> right? Okay, so Left Bank uh, on Monday, you sign up, you bring a friend, Dr. Uh, Osborne gives a quick talk, but it really gives them a chance to see what chiropractic's about. Uh, gives us a chance to kind of talk to them, okay? This month, that Monday is going to be fun. It's the first one they're letting me actually go to, so you know things are really taking <laughs> uh, Also, the makeover. For those of you who are new to this office, usually once, sometimes twice a year, we do makeovers. Makeovers are the big events. We call them an event, okay? An event is because it's usually it's going to be on Saturday. The one we have coming up is on February the 26th. It's from 9 to 12 o'clock. Uh, Dr. Doss, Dr. Osborne, myself will all be a part of it. It's a big event. We have ponies you can ride. We do face painting. We do... No, 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 we don't do any of that. Sorry. We do none of that. There'll be no face painting or ponies. But we do line this place up. Now, we normally rent an event away. The problem is with COVID, we can't find a big place to go to, which means we're going to have it here. What that does is it limits the amount of people that we can have. So we do sell tickets. It's the one event that we do sell tickets to. We have a pre-ticket price, which is a lot cheaper. These things almost always sell out 100%. It'll be packed in here um, because we just won't have enough room for everybody who wants to come. So get your tickets early if you want to come to that. Tonight. It, tonight. They go on sale. Tonight. Special, $10. We start selling it tonight. It's on metabolism. It's going to be really, really good. Can you buy it tonight here? You can yep. get it tonight here, yeah. What's the date? The date is February 26th. It's on the flyer. It's a Saturday. And it's on the flyer. How do you know that? I don't know that. Right in the bottom. In the middle. Because she read the flyer. Oh. So she read the flyer. All right. So those are the two things I get to say. Uh, Dr. Doss uh, is great. I, mean, I can't tell you how uh, lucky we are to get Dr. Doss. Uh, Dr. Doss is like the best student in his class when he came. He is a genius. I love Dr. Doss. His knowledge is way above his years in chiropractic. I think you guys are going to get a lot out of tonight. We're going to let him just go and do his thing. So, Dr. Doss, are you ready to tear it up? By the way, I threatened to put out a really cool old walk-up song, but I couldn't find one that was funny enough. So he's going to come up to silence. Is so he going to speak in his accent? He is. Oh. Yeah. I did not promise that. Dr. Doss, that's like the nicest thing that he's ever said about me. Like, honestly. <laughs> so thank you so much, first of all, everybody, for being here tonight. Uh, this is not only like a commitment to your health, but a commitment to everybody you know, because this information can be shared with everyone you know, right? Realistically, nutrition is like the second most important essential. Who knows what the first is? Chiropractic. Right on. <laughs> yeah, right on um, so yeah, going through this and putting this together, we found some uh, really amazing information, and uh, I'm really blessed and humbled that I get to share this with you, and excited as well. So let's get started. So nutrition 101, the path to nourishment, right? Perfect. So first thing about nutrition, right? A self check, a reality check. We all need to take a minute, look at our own lives, look at what we're eating, and be honest with ourselves. You know, uh, there's a lot of times when we're doing our re-exams and our check-ins so that you know people are like, "Oh, my nutrition's fantastic," you know, and then I catch them sneaking out of the Burger King layer, <laughs> and then like we just kind of make eye contact, but never say anything, right? <laughs> okay, cool. So being honest with yourself is an important part of nutrition, and also an important part of starting your journey. Okay. And the next part is breaking through the mental barriers. So actually believing that you have the strength and the fortitude to follow those steps and become that better version of yourself or that best version of yourself or that true version of yourself even is extremely important, right? And uh, if any of you have been to a Discover the Five Essentials class, mindset is one of my favorite essentials to talk about, right? Thank you for those of you who are not in, raise your hands. It's good to see you out there. Uh, but having a good mindset about anything that you do is going to help your chances significantly. So if you're telling yourself that you can do this, even if you're only taking one baby step at a time, it's going to make it a lot more possible for you, okay? All right, so the three major dangers about nutrition, right? Okay. Too much sugar, 
extreme toxins, and not enough good fats. Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Sugar is pretty much one of the worst things that you can ingest into your system. Um, it's all around bad for you, although it tastes good and you get that dopamine rush, right? We're going to get into that a little bit later, but just know that going to that now and then. And if you have any questions at all during this time, um, we can definitely make this more of a discussion period. So just raise your hand, we'll talk about some things, okay? Or if I talk way too fast, my grandma tells me that I do that all the time. <laughs> So revolutionize, revolutionize your diet, right? So there are four major changes for success, right? Cleaning up your carbs, fixing your fats, perfecting your proteins, and trashing the toxins, sugar being one of your toxins. So there's a myth here. People are saying, I have bad genes, so if my parents were sick, then I'm gonna suffer the same thing, right? Or, you know, this sickness runs in my family, diabetes runs in my family, it's in my genes. But the funny part of that is that, you know, there was a study in 2014 by scientists at Oxford that said only 10% of your genetic expression is active at any time, right? Mm -hmm. So they thought that the rest of the 90% of your DNA was junk DNA, Uh, but now they're finding new information in this new study called epigenetics, which says that what happens in your DNA is dependent upon what you do in everyday life. Mm -hmm. So your genetic expression, have a great night, is actually dependent upon the changes that you're making from day to day. So your genes aren't based upon so much about what your parents did or or who your parents were, but more about what they did and what you're doing. So it's not so much that you inherited those genes, but more like you inherited those bad habits. And if you change those, you can actively change your DNA. This is some amazing research that's coming out right now, okay? So chronic diseases are lifestyle diseases and unhealthy choices pile up and they lead to what we call inflammation, right? Inflammation is the number one cause of pretty much every chronic disease, right? We've got heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, you know, cardiovascular failure, things of that nature, all caused by inflammation. One of the major drivers of inflammation, sugar. Mm -hmm. Elevated glucose and insulin also uh, breaking down your cells, uh, causing oxidation and increasing age, or you age faster. Um, Damaged fats as well, and then our toxins. So we've got your arterial disease right up there, dementia, high blood pressure, heart disease, organ failure, metabolic syndrome, arthritis, you name it. All those long-term chronic diseases, this is gonna be your number one reason right in there. So you gotta establish your value system. Um, over 90% of the Ameri- diseases Americans face today are caused by lifestyle habits, right? We just talked about that. Those lifestyle habits lead to information. So you've gotta set a good example and set expectations. You got a really good quote here. It's your actions speak so loudly that I can't hear what you say. Ralph Waldo Emerson. So what that means to me is that you know most people can say one thing and mean another, but really at the end of the day, what your impacts or what impacts your life is the things that you do, right? Because people don't remember what you say to them; they remember how you made them feel, and it's usually not through words; it's through actions. Hello, what? So, myth, counting calories is an effective way to help your nutrition. If you look at the two different, different things right here, we've got 22 almonds, which is 153 calories, or one Twinkie, which is 150 calories. <laughs> now, this one is less calories, right? But the healthier choice is obvious. So it's not so much how much you're eating of something, but more so what you're eating and what your body's gonna do with it. Also the intention behind what you're eating, right? Because I can't lie, nobody's gonna be perfect. But if you go in and you have that snack or that guilty pleasure and you feel super terrible about it, and if you're like, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this, this is gonna make me sick, guess what? It's gonna make you sick, right? But if you're like, oh, I've been doing so good, I'm gonna have this little treat, I'm gonna get right back on track, not fooling yourself, you actually have to do those things, right? But your body is gonna be able to process that and take it into account and do a lot better with that than it would do if you were trying to go trick yourself. So try this instead. Uh, This is something called counting your macronutrients. Um, This is pretty much like what fitness instructors and trainings are trainers are doing today. Um, The way that you do it is this super complicated math formula, right? (laughs) So if you're a man, you're trying to a man or woman, you're trying to calculate your calories per day, you're getting your weight in kilograms, height in centimeters, and uh, your age, right? You're multiplying by your activity factor. Are you sedentary, lightly active, moderately active, very active, or extra active? Working out two or more times a day. Um, you, you decide your ideal macronutrient breakdown, right? You got your carbs, your fats, your proteins, and then you track your macros and caloric intake using either a food scale or a food journal or tracking app, right? 
So you guys can all take pictures of this, or you can do it the simpler way if you want. Yes. I was just going to ask you, are you going to be sharing these slides with us? Um, again? This is complicated. Yeah, no, totally. But also, <laughs> the, the very next slide is like this right here. You can, you can try this instead. There's actually a, a generator online where you can oh, just like type oh, in what you want. Did you have a QR code right there? Yeah. yeah. Like I definitely should have done that, but. I, did not have time. I got like way too deep into like nerding out of all this research. But healthyeater.com slash flexible dieting calculator has a really easy tool that you can use for this. You can even put in your goals, right? Your activity level. Um, fantastic tool, honestly. So anybody who's on a weight loss journey or you know, you're just trying to get a little bit more fit or you just want to clean up your eating to see how your body can handle things, I definitely recommend this. Uh, and for a list of what to eat for your macros, you got your carbs, right? Your protein and your fats, I recommend going to helpline.com slash nutrition dash how to count macros hashtag benefits. So we can definitely take pictures of this. Um, and if we need that, like, well, we can get that out there as well, or you can talk to me and I can, I can get you a copy of the solution. Let's see, give you a second. your macros right um, but this this brings us back to our original point of sugar right so sugar is the primary dietary cause of obesity it increases acidity in the body right which is in turn increases inflammation which is the primary cause of chronic disease we just talked about that mm -hmm. it's the primary reason for high cholesterol now high cholesterol is not necessarily a bad thing oxidized cholesterol is what's more important and we're going to talk about that a little bit later as well it causes hormonal and metabolic imbalances, right? So for anybody struggling with hormone issues or just not able to lose the weight uh, that you want to, sugar intake is going to be the number one suspect, okay? Um, it's a fast track to diabetes. It is a known toxin. It leads to heart disease. It is literally an anti-nutrient. Mm -hmm. So if you eat something good and you eat some sugar after, your body will not process that good thing because you had sugar. Mm -hmm. And it also promotes cancer. Um, so if you're eating sugar and you have cancer growing inside of your body, those are the cells that the sugar is going to feed first. Okay. So one third of dietary sugar actually comes from soft drinks. Um, soda is the number one dietary source of sugar. And high fructose corn syrup has increased from 0% in anybody's diet since from 1966 to 63 pounds a year in 2001. That's insane. Imagine drinking like 63 pounds straight of high fructose corn syrup, even over the span of a year. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, so the average American actually drinks 55 gallons of soda a year. Yes. So is high fructose corn syrup even worse than sugar, or just yeah, high fructose sugars? corn syrup is like a processed derivative of sugar that your body doesn't even really break down. Okay. Like it takes like some of the molecules out, and the rest of it just kind of turns into sludge, and like lines your gas for the test. Oh which can make it super thick over time, increasing your inflammation, decreasing your body's ability to like regulate your hormones and ruining your immune system. Because 70% of your immune system is in your gut, for those of you who came with gut outside. I have a question. Yes. After hearing all that information, I feel very stupid saying this, mm -hmm. or asking this, but coffee. Mm -hmm. So I get out your sweetener, so I know how bad that is, and I switched from regular sugar to apparently it's organic coconut sugar. Mm -hmm. But if I want a sweetener in my coffee, because I use almond milk, what is what is a good alternative? Um, so stevia is a really good alternative. It right? is. It's sugar, uh, xylitol, or erythritol, those are sugar alcohols that your body breaks down. Be careful with xylitol though, because if you eat too much, it's kind of like magnesium, it'll just like flush your entire gastrointestinal tract out. So stevia. So stevia. Stevia. Really? Yeah, that's the go-to. Yeah. Unless you're trying to like head to the bathroom immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Splenda is worse than sugar, actually. Um, causes gastrointestinal problems. It's literally a neurotoxin. It causes seizures, dizziness, and migraines, right? You get blurred visions, allergic reactions. Your blood sugar shoots through the root and it causes you to gain weight, which is interesting, right? Because you're not eating sugar, but it still has that same effect on your blood sugar. So this is almost like pointless. It's just like poisoning yourself and it tastes gross, like in my personal opinion. But sorry for the stevia lovers out there, but still. Um, and this has the carcinogenic potential when you cook with it. It can literally turn cancerous. So, 
So if sugar is so bad, what can we use as a sweetener? You're a little bit heavy again there. Um, so natural sweeteners, right? Your stevia, xylitol, rutinol. Um, like I said, be careful with the xylitol. Don't go crazy, or you will have to help head to the nearest bathroom. Um, honey dates and maple syrup are also natural, but they do spike your blood sugar. Um, so I get this question a lot. You know, people are always like, "Oh, like why can't I have honey or maple syrup or agave?" Right? Those things are all natural. But if you think about, you know, what humans were designed to do, which is hunt and gather, right? How often was it that you came across honey or agave or maple syrup? And what, and how much work did you have to do? Like, I mean, climbing a tree, you know, fighting off bees, potentially a bear. I'm just saying, like, you know, your body wasn't made to have access to those things 24 7. So use them sparingly as a treat. And then myth yes, fat makes you fat. Actually, completely untrue. Um, for those of you who attend any class here, we harp on omega 3s time and time again, time and time again. Like, your body needs those, your brain needs those, it loves it, okay? Um, then we've got bad fats and good fats. So basically bad fats are anything that's been man-made or tampered with, all right? So you've got your hydrogenated, anything that says hydrogenated on it is terrible for you. So if you look at a label and you read hydrogenated, whatever, put it back down and walk away, <laughs> okay? Um, so that's your cottonseed oil, so your soybean oil, and your vegetable oils. Your trans fats is your margarine and your synthetic butters, okay? And then your rancid vegetable oils. Uh, corn oil, canola oil, are those labeled just like vegetable oil, which is pretty misleading. Yes. Um, it's found in practically every bread, cracker, cookie, and box. Okay. So your good fats are not altered by man. So you got your extra virgin olive oil, avocados, and avocado oil, really good source of omega 3s. Coconut and coconut oil. Be careful with cook cooking with these though, um, because once it starts to smoke, um, or that smoking point, it can turn toxic and it will be bad for your body at that point. So you want to make sure that it's not smoking when you're cooking. What about grapeseed oil? Because I cook with grapeseed oil. Grapeseed oil is still over here, mm. unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. Um, you got your raw nuts, your seeds and oils, yes. How about avocado oil? Avocado oil is right here. Right there, it's a good fat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, olive yeah. oil, you can't heat at higher temperatures, but grapeseed oil, you can't, but it's not good. Uh, that's what my research says. It does say seed oils over here, um, but I've seen it on both sides of the chart, but if I see it, if I reputable, any reputable source saying that it might have negative implications, I'd rather have you guys just like go with that. Uh, coconut oil, you can still cook with them. Are you like fry, frying things in grapeseed oil, or what's, what's the uh, yes question? No, I was gonna say I use avocado oil for my high temperature oils. Oh, you do? So I need, yeah. Cool. Does it have a, a different tip? Because cook, I don't use coconut oil because it has a a lower smoking point. It's just the taste. Like I don't want it to taste. Avocado oil everything. actually is is good. It's good. Okay, thank you. Awesome, love it. Um, yeah, real butter, raw butter is best, or ghee. Ghee is freaking awesome for you. Can't recommend that enough. Okay. Raw cheese and yogurt, uh, really, really good probiotics there. Uh, grass fed meats, eggs, home milks, fatty fish like Pacific or wild salmon, or salmon, uh, and then small fish like sardines. Uh, not just any small fish, sardines specifically, ocean caught small, small fish tend to be really high in mercury or heavy metals because they can't process them out as fast as larger fish can. That's up there. Oh, what about sesame oil, sun, uh, sunflower oil? Uh, mm -hmm. Not too sure on those. I don't think that sesame oil and sunflower oil are that good for you, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what we're struggling with, okay, though. Sure. Right? That's everything that's going on. That's what this is all about. Okay, thank you. Um, so the myth here is that fat in meats causes heart disease, cancer, osteoporosis, and kidney disease. And that's actually not true. Saturated fats are actually really good for your body. Um, it's a really great fuel for your heart. Your heart loves saturated fats. Um, but like everything, right, you don't want to go overboard, okay? Um, they help your cell membrane function. So for those of you who uh, need a quick refresher, they're like middle school biology, uh, each and every cell in your body has a tiny little membrane around it. It's like a little wall. That membrane is made out of two layers of fat, okay? And that they sit on opposing sides. And that lets things either pass into the cell or exit the cell. That's extremely important because your cells need nourishment, they need nutrition, and they also need to excrete waste. If you don't have good fats making up those membranes, those membranes get extremely rigid. And what that does is that means that your cells are going to either hold on to toxins or not get the nutrients that they need, eventually causing them to die or go cancerous. 
Um, it's also really good anti uh, anti cavity, anti plaque, and anti fungal agent because of lauric acid, and it pre prevents the oxidation of cholesterol. Right? So what happens with oxidation is that when you eat something that's not so good for you, or even sometimes things that are good for you, you get something called AGEs, which is advanced like glycation end products. Um, basically, they're free radicals, so you'll get little uh, molecules that are running around without electrons that will steal electrons from other molecules, making your tissues unstable and break down at accelerated rates, and that's actually the true cause of aging. So, uh, preventing oxidation of cholesterol, right? So when that happens to cholesterol, that makes cholesterol more rigid, it makes it more sticky, which causes it to pile up in your arteries and then can eventually lead to failure of the system. Um, the problems with conventional meat, right? So we've got two main ones. This is toxic. <laughs> problems with conventional meat. Uh, toxic bioaccumulation, right? Um, what that means is literally that you are what you eat. Bioaccumulation is a fancy phrase for saying that. Um, so if you know there is a cow that's eating really nice uh, green pastures, it's got the good probiotics, it's living a good, happy, normal cow life. When you eat that cow, you're going to be absorbing those good probiotics. You're going to be absorbing those good energies and foods, if you will, right? But if you have a cow that is tormented day in and day out, that is fed antibiotics, that is pumped full of growth hormone, and is just absolutely miserable because it can't walk one foot to the left or one foot to the right without bumping into another cow, you're going to be absorbing that stress. You're going to be absorbing that disease. You're going to be absorbing that lifestyle of that cow, right? So that's why it's really, really important to eat clean meats. Um, herbivores, you got to eat ten. They got to eat ten grams of living plants to make one gram of itself, right? But for carnivores, they can accumulate toxins ten times greater than herbivores. So that's like one hundred times more toxic than soils and plants. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Is it very true? So herbivores have to eat ten grams of living plants to make one gram of itself. Right. So if an herbivore is eating like you have to eat ten grams of plants and then you make one more gram. But carnivores eat herbivores, right? Or other carnivores even. So they're accumulating toxins at an even higher rate because they're not eating these plants, they're eating whatever else is being produced by X, Y, and Z species, right? So that makes them 100% more toxic than the soils and plants. And the other is your essential fatty acids, right? So you have to change your omega ratios. Like we talked about omega 3s earlier, that is your anti inflammatory um, omega, omega fatty acid. Omega 6s are what is caused from your animal fats, right? So, omega 6s are inflammatory for your system, although they are important for making up your cell membrane. But what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to have a balance of omega 3s and omega 6s, okay? It's supposed to be a 2 to 1 ratio optimally. So, for every two servings of red meat that you have, you should have one serving of avocado or uh, salmon um, or wherever else you can get your omega 3s, like walnuts, right? What that does is that provides your body with the right amount uh, for your cell membranes and keeps your inflammation low. Um, anything like above that, you slowly become more and more at risk for disease. Um, and then I believe anything above 15 to one, so um, 15 servings of red meat to one serving of omega-3s, you start to go at risk for like psychosis and things like that because your brain runs on omega-3s as well. What if you don't eat meat? What would be an omega-6? Mm, that's tough, actually. Let's see, let's see what else can we find omega-6s. I have to get back to you on that. I do know this answer, but my brain's not spitting that right now. Okay. Uh, no problem. Um, GMO-fed animals produce similar fatty acids to organic-fed animals, but they are very different nutritionally. So the fatty acids that you're eating from a genetically modified organism, right? We talked about live accumulation. It's going to be way different from one that's organic and that was raised in healthy lifestyle. Yes. Um, did you say when it's two to one, which one is two and which one's one? Omega sixes are two and then okay. omega threes are one. Thank you. No problem. Cool. cool. Um, so change your animal products first, right? Grass fed beef, free range chicken, wild caught fish, and natural source dairy. Full fat as well, the dairy. Um, none of that, like 2% of that stuff or like, any of that, that's them literally stripping all the nutrients out of it. And you're, Basically, just drinking like milky water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So another myth: you eat five to eight servings of grains every day for a healthy diet. Right? That's the base of the food pyramid, um, which is actually not true. Uh, you do need high servings of carbohydrates, 
but vegetables are actually carbohydrates, right? So your body can get all of it from vegetables, and most Americans are eating highly processed or hybridized and refined mm -hmm. grains in the way. Um, so the actual grains that are good for you, like einkorn wheat, which used to be grown in the United States and got taken over by genetically modified wheat, is pretty much no longer existing. Um, genetically modified wheat is extremely bad for you because of gluten, as most of you may know. Mm -hmm. Gluten produces a molecule inside of your intestines called zonulin, which pokes little holes in your intestinal lining. Fun fact, your intestinal lining is only one cell thing. So if it has a hole in it and you're eating something toxic, those toxins are coming out of your intestines and going into your system, causing inflammation and chronic disease yet again. Um, cholesterol causes heart disease, another myth, right? We talked about the oxidation of cholesterol that causes heart disease. Um, fun fact is that more people have heart attacks with normal cholesterol than elevated cholesterol, right? And then, but so many people are being put on cholesterol medication in order to manage that, right? There's a higher death rate with low cholesterol than with high cholesterol. And that is because cholesterol is used to create hormones, right? Your testosterone, um, your cortisol, your estrogen, all of that is cholesterol based. It makes bile to digest fats. So in order for your body to get those good fats that we're talking about, right? So if you're on a cholesterol suppressing hormone, your body's not making bile properly, and your body's not able to digest fat, that's ultimately damaging to you, not only your nervous system, um, but every cell in your body, right? And it repels, repairs, protects cells, and is involved in the body's healing process. So cholesterol's a friend. Uh, the FDA and USDA effectively protect the general public from dangerous products. I didn't even put a truth on this one because, like, mm -hmm. I feel like everybody here knows that like there's been some scandalous stuff. That's not, I mean, not even talking about right now, but in the past, right, where uh, the sugar industry paid the FDA to win the fat industry, and everyone was saying like, "Oh, fat is bad. That's why everybody's getting sick." While secretly, sugar has been the culprit this entire time. Um, so, you know, definitely do your own research and make your own informed decisions and also rely on people who think outside of the box instead of just going with the current narrative of the world. Um, getting a second opinion is always, always a good idea and then making your own choice is the best. Toxic foods, right? You got your Franken foods, which is kind of a joke. Like your Frankenstein foods, they brought it back from the dead and like put a whole bunch of things together and slap some pieces and they're like, get out there and be somebody. Now you're eating this on your plate. Uh, pesticides, <laughs> your dirty dozen, your clean 15. If nobody's heard of that, I definitely recommend that you look it up. Your dirty dozen is foods that you can only buy organic. Um, the difference between that and the clean 15 is that the dirty dozen has a really permeable outer layer, which means it's usually something like really soft and porous, like strawberries, right? So if you spray a strawberry with pesticides, it's going to sink into the center, and there's not really any getting, like, getting that out. Um, you can wash it, you can do whatever you want, but that strawberry doesn't have pesticides in it, which is why you want to go organic. Versus your Clean 15, which are things with like a really hard outer shell, like an avocado. You normally don't have to buy those organic because they have that thick outer layer, which you can rinse the pesticides off if they don't sink in. Um, but that changes every year, so definitely look that up, okay? Um, dangerous additives. The FDA has approved about 3,000 food additives, preser preservatives, and colorings, um, most of which are actually banned in Europe. Um, so the United States just kind of like firing at the hip. Okay. Um, the average person ingests 150 pounds of additives every year. And there are 3 million tons of pesticides used worldwide, making more than 1,600 chemicals used in production. And most of them are not studied on, on their effects on humans. Not long-term effects, but just effects, period. So a lot of the stuff that we're spraying down with our, our food with, um, we have no idea what it does to our bodies. We're just like, all right, this seems good. So definitely watch out for those toxic foods. Another myth, eating healthy is boring, tasteless, and hard to do. Um, we have some really great nutrition plans here at Maximize Living. I don't know if any of you have tried the core plan or the advanced plan, or you can just like open your align your health book. There's a ton of delicious <laughs> recipes in there. Um, much appreciation to the people that actually make those and bring them into the office, because some of these days I'm starving, super happy, <laughs> and then they're like, yes, advanced plan muffins. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little emotional. Um, so you shouldn't feel hungry or deprived. Um, this is about being a sugar burner versus a fat burner, right? If you get really, really low on energy, if you haven't eaten for a few hours, that means that your body is relying on sugar. If your body is relying on fat, you can break down your own fat and create sustainable energy. Um, a really easy way to know if you're a sugar burner or a fat burner is to just do a quick fast, what, 24 hours. How do you feel? Are you okay? Then you're probably a fat burner. If you feel like you're gonna like drive into a wall, then you're probably a sugar burner. 
and I would definitely not recommend that. Get a snack, you know, but take your time and transition over by cutting off the amount of sugar that you eat. So a common belief is that you don't need to take supplements because you get adequate amounts in, uh, from your diet alone. But the sad thing about that is that, you know, the quality of food that we're eating, the amount of nutrition in the food that we're eating, the food that's grown is decreasing every year, right? So our cultural cultivation practices, right? So like fertilizers, pesticides, all that stuff is stripping the soil, right? Um, and the nutrient amounts from the soil in turn. So it's killing off the microbacteria and it's not letting the, uh, the nutrients soak up into the plants anymore. So there's been a constant decline in protein, calcium, phosphorus, iron, B2, vitamin C, and magnesium over the, of the last 50 years. It's just kind of dropping steadily. Um, and there's a study at the Institute of Beckett, Massachusetts, that from 1975 and 1977, that found that the average calcium levels in 12 vegetables declined in 25% or 27%, right? That's in about 20 years. And that was 1997, okay? So iron levels have dropped 37%, vitamin A and vitamin C levels 21 and 30% each respectively. And there's also the uh, methylmercury in rain, Increasing CO2 levels that are down to your plants, yes. Oh, no, I was just Oh, okay, no problem. So, definitely uh, taking that into account, um, supplementation is extremely important, and especially for magnesium. It's involved in over 300 different chemical processes. Totally jumped the gun on that. I was going to talk about that later, but whatever. I'll say it again. And you guys just like, oh, I act surprised. Like, there's a surprise. <laughs> um, here's some common, common nutritional deficiencies. So, we've got calcium, right? A sign that you're deficient in calcium. You're getting muscle cramps, abnormal heart rhythms. Um, sign that you're deficient in vitamin D, fatigue, muscle aches, weakness, immunosuppression, right? Vitamin D is extremely important for your immune system. Um, I know that they only give us a recommended uh, daily allowance, but that recommended daily allowance is only to beat rickets. Right, so that like, you know that disease or that children are born with in places with not a lot of sun that makes their bones look super brittle, and, you know, they, they get maldeformed legs. Um, that's what the minimum amount of vitamin D is based off of. Um, if you get up to higher levels, um, it helps with your psychology, it helps with physiology, literally making your body more effective at fighting cancer um, up to some. And the recommended daily allowance of vitamin D, right, is 1,000 IUs for every 35 pounds of your body weight. Okay. Um, I'll repeat that later as well. Um, iron, signs of low iron, okay. anemia, fatigue, pale skin, and then dull, thin hair, right? Uh, vitamin B12 is extremely important. Anemia, a uh, specific type of anemia called pernicious anemia. Numbness in your limbs, loss of balance, fatigue, tongue swelling, and memory loss. And then you got folate, uh, also known as folic acid in its other form. You got fatigue, mouth sores, uh, poor growth, and then color changes in your hair, skin, and nails. Uh, magnesium gives you a loss of appetite, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, weakness, and soreness. So if you feel like you don't get really hungry when you get small random bouts of nausea, um, I definitely recommend uh, adding some magnesium to your nutrition. Um, I have a lot of friends my age that actually uh, feel that way, and it's surprising how common that this knowledge actually comes in because we're not getting it from our vegetables, we're not getting it from our soil. So just adding a little bit more magnesium to your diet will help to balance things out because it's used in almost everything that your body is. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead. There we go. Is there a certain type of magnesium that's best for um, I believe that magnesium citrate is the most bioavailable. So bioavailability means that your uh, whatever supplement that you're taking isn't necessarily going to be absorbed by your body equally. So there are a bunch of different types of magnesium, a bunch of different types of calcium. Magnesium citrate is bio, has the most bioavailability of pure magnesium. Um, but we, so we uh, offer magnesium glycinate here, which has been chelated, which means that uh, chelation is basically like slapping a protein onto something and then cleaning it through a process. Um, so it makes your body digest it a lot uh, more easily and faster. So either one of those would be highly recommended. But I'd go with the protein. So So at-risk individuals for calcium deficiency, ages nine to 18 children, right? Older adults, pregnant and lactating women. Vitamin D, low sun exposure, we've already talked about that. Darker skin, UVB rays are blocked by melanin. So mm -hmm. for my melanated people out there, take some vitamin D supplements. Um, elderly, pregnant and lactating women as well, right? Uh, iron, you your preschool children. Um, those who menstruate, right? Um, your vegans and vegetarians as well. 
uh, vitamin B12, you got your vegans, vegetarians, the elderly, um, folate, women 14 to 30, pregnant women, Latin women, uh, black women, gastrointestinal, um, people who are afflicted by gastrointestinal issues, definitely need folate in there. Um, and long-term alcoholics, because that kind of just like strips all that vitamin B out. Mm -hmm. Folate is uh, vitamin B9 for directly, which is also included in your vitamin B supplements. Magnesium, pregnant, lactate women, elderly, gastrointestinal disease, diseases, type 2, diabetics, long-term alcoholism, and pretty much everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so get some magnesium. That's the one thing that you hear from this talk tonight. Magnesium and omega 3s. Um, vitamins can be difficult to absorb from diet alone, right? Supplementation, super important. We already mm -hmm. talked about that. Um, let's, let's see. There we go. Uh, quality and pure supplements, right? So if you're not going to buy your supplements for a maximized living, um, which is, you know, totally fine, but uh, we do do our really good research here and make sure that all our ingredients are sourced from the best places. Here are some things that you want to look for. Uh, brand guarantee, right? Anybody who's willing to stand behind their product, uh, or at least give you a refund over it, right? Yeah. If something doesn't work or you get sick, that's a really good sign. You wanna make sure it's tested for safety, right? Like not just one of those things that they're just throwing out there without at least knowing that it's okay for you to take. Okay. Uh, manufactured in the United States at a GMP certified, FDA registered, and NSF certified facilities. I'm not sure what a couple of those mean, but uh, it's still important. Um, and then also no artificial sweeteners, GMOs, and, and no gluten. Remember, because gluten folks hold it again. So that brings us to some of our supplements here. Uh, we've got our daily essentials for men and women, right? So if you wanted to, you could buy everything individually, but we put this nice little package together for you. Our Maximize Living Dead, I didn't do anything. So, um, it comes with about a 30 day supply and each pack uh, has vitamin B, right? With the delayed B complex with delayed release. So you're getting uh, vitamins B1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 12, as well as biotin. Um, so that's really, really good for your body, just able to function. Um, vitamin B is extremely important for your body's overall health and for making your energy, right? So uh, also the men and women's multivitamin, right? Got a bunch of different things in there. Um, vitamin A through E, your folate, biotin. Men's get the endurance blend, antioxidant blend, cardiovascular health, and prostate. And then women have breast health blend, antioxidant blend, hair, skin, and nails, and stress management. Um, you know, different bodies go through different things and different transformations and different chemical processes. So it was formulated to get you specifically what you need. Okay. There's the magnesium in that? Uh, there's a little bit of magnesium in the multivitamin, but uh, in the, the daily essentials, yeah, it does have okay. this long magnesium as well. Um, let's see, let's see. And then we've got our B complex of delayed release, right? So. This isn't gonna give you that immediate hit of energy like three cups of coffee would, mm -hmm. but it gives you that sustainable like eight hour, like nice, like all right, I can do this feeling, okay? Um, B complex, or that B vitamins help your body produce energy and they're rapidly depleted during times of stress. Mm -hmm. So is anybody in this room stressed? <laughs> right, then all you have to be taking B vitamins. Um, we've got our Optimal omegas, super important. Your optimal omegas, right? So we've got 2,400 milligrams of ultra pure, high quality, and it's made out of flaxseed oil, borage, and Pacific fish oil. Um, it provides your omega-3 fatty acids, and it's breaking down into three kinds. You just got your ALA, which is pretty normal. Um, the average human is not deficient in ALA. You can actually get that from plant material, okay? Um, your EPA and your DHA are both super, super important. Your DHA is what makes up your fat, so it's really, really good for your cell membranes. Also great for your brain. Um, your DHA is what wraps your neurons. There's something called your myelin sheath, and it's insulated. It insulates your neurons so that your brain can send messages all the way down to your big toe and then back up at like 260 miles per hour. Like um, but in order to do that, right, you need that insulation so that those messages can shoot without being led astray. And EPA is super, super important as well. That's actually the anti-inflammatory part mm. of your omega-3s. Um, what it does is it turns into something called uh, prostaglandin, which uh, helps to just reduce inflammation and pain inside of your body as well. Okay. So anybody in chronic pain, um, anybody with gut issues, anybody who's got a body, <laughs> should be taken from okay. Let's see, this is your magnesium, right? Um, it's the second most abundant cation, cation in your body, um, which means that it's a positive ion. Um, it's inside of every cell, okay? 
Uh, it's involved in over 300 different reactions inside of the body. It supports your nerve cells, muscle tissues, your immune system, cardiovascular system, bone strength, metabolism, like you name it. Your body needs magnesium. It's something that we're really deficient in. You gotta like repeat it probably like three to four more times before this is over. Uh, take magnesium, take magnesium, take magnesium, take magnesium. There it comes. Vitamin D3 and probiotics, super important. Vitamin D3 is great for your immune system, as we talked about. Uh, normally, you would get it from sunlight, but um, you know the most efficient way to synthesize vitamin D is by having direct sunlight on your abdomen. So from under your sternum to the top of your hips is where most, uh, at least 20% of your body's vitamin D3 generators are. Um, unfortunately, that's not the place that we usually get sunlight in today's society, so you, know, you have to supplement for it. Um, and then taking it in you know, higher amounts is also really good for just boosting your immune system. And then we've got our maximum living nutrition plans, right? So we've got our core plan, it's just nutrition is for healthy families, um, get your healthy maintenance, right? Prevent disease. It's pretty good for weight loss a little bit, right? You're cutting out all the extra shenanigans. Um, the advanced plan is really, really great for hormone repair. Um, so if you find like, you find yourself trying to lose weight and you feel like your body is just really holding on to that, definitely try the advanced plan. Um, inflammation and disease management as well. Accelerated weight loss, complete health restoration. Um, it basically burns fat, detoxifies your body, reduces inflammation, and helps walk down your hormones. That's the purpose of the advanced plan. The advanced plan and the core plan are actually pretty similar, uh, but the advanced plan, right, it's just three basic changes. Sugar and carbohydrates eliminate grains, sugar, and fruit, except for fruit that is really, really low in sugar, and ideally you're gonna wanna eat that in the morning. So that's gonna be your berries, your grapefruit, and your Granny Smith apples. I don't know if grapes count as berries, but they are not an advanced plant. But in fact, grapes have the most sugar. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah. What about banana Smith? Banana yeah. Grapes are pretty high. Then they have like a, I think it's a yeah. hundred. Like a grape, a dried fruit, look at it, dried fruit. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 So, Granny Smith? Granny Smith yeah. apples have, have low sugar. Oh, really? Yeah. In the salad. Okay, right. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. But usually things that are better are really good for your system. Okay. All right. Uh, why in the morning? Uh, because you want to have your sugar so your body can burn that off as fuel instead of like transitioning it and turning it into fat if you have it earlier. So you're going to want to replace your conventional protein sources with your natural protein sources, okay? And then remove your bad fats and replace some good ones, right? So all those cooking oils and stuff that we discussed earlier, you got to get those in the way. Um, the only change between this and the core plan is that uh, all fruit and healthy grains are allowed in the core plan. Mm. Foods to avoid, right? Anything with processed carbohydrates and sugars. That looks delicious, but it's secretly terrible for you. This is a Trojan horse right here. <laughs> Trojan horse cupcakes. Don't go next door then. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. <laughs> <You're laughs> <You're laughs> <right? laughs> I'm not going to lie. They're amazing. I love their business. But look, it's one of those things, right? Like if you're going to have a treat, you're going to acknowledge it, you're going to yeah. get back to business when it's done. Right? Yeah. That's it's all about having the discipline and the mindset. Mm -hmm. Foods with sugar substitutes, we already talked about how Splendid was just absolutely terrible for you. Mm -hmm. Like uh, trans fats, foods containing fats that turn rancid, and then any type of highly processed food. So if it's got hydrogenated or like preservatives mm -hmm. or any of that stuff in the label, cut it out. Drop it. Okay. <laughs> uh, labels reading, do's and don'ts. You gotta worry about ingredient types more than amounts, right? So worry about whether you need carbohydrates versus how many grams of carbs you need. Okay. Um, be aware of questionable marketing. Like some people label themselves as organic. Um, I know this happens a lot with organic fruit too. Um, I think there's like a specific label code. I couldn't find it, but um, sometimes the label code on the fruit will say that it's organic, but Organic can be like modified in some way and still be labeled organic in some cases. So definitely check that out. Um, don't buy item, I, items with these ingredients: uh, monosodium glutamate or MSG, right? Artificial sweeteners, hydrogenated anything, uh, refined flour, additives, colorings, preservatives, and chemical names. Which are, those are most of those things that are banned in other countries that we like uh, run, run rampant in America. Right? Um, you know, our number one product that we produce here is healthcare. Right, so, same people. Uh, so, let's put two to two together. There we go. Shopping. So, plan your meals for the week. Take a list. Um, so, you don't have what I call Target syndrome where you walk into Target and then it just like sucks you in every neck you <laughs> How did I spend $1,200? Like, uh, keep the basics stocked for meals on the fly, right? So, if you just need like some 
normal like bananas or you know like or some apples or nuts things like that. Uh, spend more time planning and shopping and cooking. So also, you, shop the perimeter of your grocery store. You oh. notice all the healthy stuff is always yeah. on the outside. In a yeah. circle. Wow, I have <laughs> never known that. Yeah. 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 All, all, all the processed stuff's in the middle. middle. Yeah. yeah. Fire. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, this is why we make a discussion because there's more of it. Right, what'd you say? On the ends, too, the, all the stuff isn't really good usually on the end caps. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so all the stuff in the middle is all the processed yeah. foods. Right on, it's good to know. Uh, once again, read the labels and use the pesticide guide. I think it's got pesticides in it. Just I tried to make that rhyme, but it really did that. <laughs> uh, general healthy nutrition tips, establish a big why, right? Like, why are you doing what you want to do? Why are you losing weight? Like, do you, is there something that you want to do? Do you, are you losing weight for an event? Um, you know, just as long as you have that focus inside of your mind, keep that in the forefront of your mind, another max mindset trick. Uh, if you have a goal that you want to reach, you have to be thinking about it constantly. Literally, you're kind of reprogramming your brain with every thought. It's like going to the gym and flexing your muscle. If you do one bicep curl, are you gonna walk out of there feeling buff? No. If you do 200 of them every day, you're gonna be looking ribs. I guarantee you, you probably get rhabdomyolysis, which is like when you start bleeding on the inside. But anyway, start thinking food is fuel and sustenance for your body, right? So definitely wanna make sure that like the things that you eat while you can enjoy them, know that they're building blocks for the life and the person that you're trying to create if you have a vision for yourself. Um, add more healthy nutrient dense options, take away your unhealthy items, spend time planning and shopping, keep a food journal, all those good things, right? <laughs> and then last but not least, right, this doesn't matter if you're not taking care of the very first essential, right, which is your maximized nervous system, okay? So your brain controls everything in your body, your function, your healing, your energy, your spinal cord and your nerves are going to go down into your stomach, your pancreas, your kidneys, your bladder, your colon, all of these things that are going to be involved in your digestion and your excretion systems. So making sure that you get adjusted, making sure that all of those systems are connected and working in complete cohesion for the entire system is extremely essential. You can diet all you want, but if your stomach's not working, what's going to happen? Right. That is why we get adjusted. This is the whole purpose of why we're here. So signs of subluxation can range from you know asthma to numbness and tingling to neck pain. Um, depression, insomnia, gastrointestinal issues, right? You name it. Uh, if you don't have a functioning nervous system, everything on the distal end of those peripheral nerves, it's not gonna be working as it should. <clears throat> this is why we get adjusted, this is why we're here, this is why I'm able to deliver this message. Uh, core chiropractic is what we do. There we go. Okay, so, uh, and also don't miss your next opportunity to bring your friends and change your life. We're gonna have Cheryl come up and talk about some of the things that we're gonna be doing. Uh, what's what's I mean, Dr. Sherry already hit on it. So community dinner is that that opportunity. So if you guys have talked about it before, um, but it's a really good, a good way for people to see what we do. They get to hear from Dr. Osborne, they get to talk to Dr. Osborne and Dr. Sherry will be coming to that one. Um, left bank stand in a row, um, 6.15. There's three menu options to choose from. We'll get that to you guys, but, um, and it's a great space because we get to have a private room. Um, and it's just it's just a lot, a good good way to be able to connect with, you know, like many people do. Yeah. Um, and then he already touched on the makeover, but um, coming up, so yeah. Um, I was gonna mention when Dr. Doss is talking about shopping, um, we do have a shop with the doc um, video on our Discover Tribe, um, Discover Health Tribe group on Facebook. So if you guys are not a part of that, um, just request it and we will approve you to go on there. But there are, it's an older video in Sprouts when we used to be able to have 20 people follow us around in the store um, and go through and find like good, better, best. Um, and we have a ton of resources on that. I have paper resources, I can email you guys stuff. So um, make sure we have your email. Um, I think we have our list of everyone that was here tonight. So, um, but if you guys want those things, just let me know and I'll put a little dash next to you and we'll get those out. Sweet. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, so so Sarah here actually found what I was talking about. So um, with fruit, it, it has a five-digit barcode number starting with a nine. It's actually organic, okay? If but it starts with a nine, If it organic? starts with a nine, it's organic, right? But if it has a five-digit five barcode number and it starts with an eight, 
even if it's labeled organic, it's still genetically modified. Mm -hmm. There's like a loophole, okay? So ethanide, forget that, all right? And then uh, four digit number period is uh, just completely, like it contains pesticides, and you said it's all that six, jargon. Six, five, 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 five digits. Five digits. Five digit number, and a nine. yeah. Five, five digit and a nine. nine is what you want to be. Okay. Um, Can I take a picture? Yeah, oh, last but not least, I forgot to announce this, right? Very, very important. Um, so the price cost here, like if you wanted to buy all of these things that were given to you in the essentials, um, it would be $139.95 individually, but the, the package deal is $109.36. And since you guys are here tonight, um, you're giving 10% off on supplements. So uh, definitely thank you so much for coming this evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I hope you guys learned something, had some fun a little bit. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 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 Yes.